What's up, Airheads? We're back. It's time once again for Putting On Airs. We're here in the virtual Airstream studios. Cho, I've been dying to get on this here uh, setup with you this week because I've got, uh, I need something explained to me, something of the utmost importance. I need, I, what in the fuck is going on with the royal family right now? I'm trusting that you will know. Now, here's the thing. I could have at some point looked this up. Sure. Obviously, we live in the information age, but I thought it would be more fun to have you just explain it to me because I was laboring under the assumption that you would know just about all about it or at least have some theories or something. I don't I, I don't know. So Kate Middleton's dead or gone or well, that's, vanished that's, or <laughs> what? <laughs> that's definitely a work in theory. And Trey, here's the thing, and I, I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, you And I know this because this is what's happened to me. You could have looked it up, and I maintain that you would still know as much as you currently know. Like, you, do you know what I'm saying? Like, they're like, oh, so it's I'm, like a I, mystery. Yeah, it's a, it's a super mystery because oh, like, okay. it's all complete. Every single thing that I find out is a complete hypothesis and there's a conspiracy theory to it. And then every conspiracy theory, there's a conspiracy theory on top of that. So like the only facts that there are, and these are like facts is that Kate Middleton has not been seen since holiday time 2003, right? Okay, so so this past December was the last time she was seen in public. And at some point, someone noticed that and put that out there, like tweeted out, like, hey, has anybody else noticed that ain't nobody seen Kate in a while? And then people started ruminating on that or, or yeah, what? Yeah, and... And she's so, been notably but, absent from like important events and things like that, like things she should have been at, but she wasn't, or it's just, Hey, ain't nobody seen that bitch. I think, <laughs> I think, well, that's the thing is like, I'm pretty sure like anywhere the prince goes, she's supposed to be there. You know what I mean? Like anytime he's seen with his kids, she's supposed to be there. And a lot of people were talking about like she'd put out some press release that like, oh, she had a couple health problems and she was just, you know, don't worry, I'm getting these taken care of. I'll be back soon, whatever. And then a lot of people, of course, were speculating, oh, she's getting a BBL. Do you know what a BBL is? Big black. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Try, try to say, is there a word for dick that starts with L? Uh, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. right? Like what? Uh, it's funny. I, I, you'd think that we'd have one raring and ready to I go. Know. That's what I thought. Like I, when I said big black, when I started the buh, I was like, I'll have it by the time I get to the L. Like, you know, yeah. I'll be able to think of something that means dick that starts with L. Right. And But I can't, and I still can't. Like, well, hold on. Let's go through the alphabet and see how many we can get. A, I got nothing. Uh, yeah, vowels a, are going to be hard. Well, A, with, like okay. With, hold on. A, if you, it's a Jewish one, but they call some, like, before they get circumcised, they call them anteater dicks. Uh, B would be begging. I, okay. Anteater, because it looks like an anteater I before they get it, circumcised. But yeah. I don't think that's, like, official Jewish lore. Though, no, I no, think, it's racist. Yeah. It's yeah. Ra it's it, well, actually, you know what? Because like, you know, this is funny. Like, so Jews, like, Who? okay, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is right. pro Jew, by the way. Um, like, so Jews get like it's part of their religious ceremony to get circumcised, correct? Like, correct. that's what a bris is. Yes, yes, and yeah, but like, I everyone I know, everyone I know was circumcised. Yep, like. I don't, I, the only, now there was only one boy in our school that wasn't circumcised. So right. like, why did, why did Jews get all the like shine for being circumcised when like, it's a, maybe it's just cause ours isn't religious. I don't think Jews get all the shine for being circumcised. I think okay. that they, I think that it's like, it's a thing with them. Cause people know it's like, they got a dude whose whole job is to snip baby dicks and stuff. The right. Moil. oil. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like people know that guy's name. They know the name of that the t job title because like, that's a wild job to have. Right. It's called a bris. Right. When it happens, it's like also like so many comedians have been Jewish and, and writers and stuff have been Jewish. And that's an inherently f humor rich scenario. Moil, bris, circumcision, you know what I mean? I think it's just sort of entered the public consciousness. But I think it was culturally a thing in America for a long time. Uh, right. TM, I'm actually curious. TMI here, you, you mind telling us what's up with, uh, with yo baby? He froze up right then.
All right, Airhead, sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties. I know us, hard to imagine, right? Be still your hearts, but it's true. We switched to a different recording service, so that's why things may look a little different to you now. But we left off, Corey. You were frozen at the time, so we were talking about circumcised wieners, Mm -hmm. and I said, you know, TMI, I apologize, but I wanted to ask what's Mm -hmm. up with yo baby's dick. (laughs) And I have a reason for asking. (laughs) I have a reason for asking. I'm I'm curious because it is relevant to what we're talking about. <laughs> but yeah, what's up with your baby's dick, bro? Uh, well, uh, it, it, unfortunately, it, he he is circumcised, and I okay. was not. Right. I wasn't for it. Uh, but okay, it, well, see, that's and, why I asked because it's becoming less and less of a thing. It's becoming controversial. My sons I didn't are want and, Yeah, my sons are eleven and twelve. They were born. And <laughs> what's they were up born with your baby's baby dick? dick? Yeah. Well, you know. It's a cultural conversation. It's so funny to think about. It's so funny to think about like some one of our librarian women fans who has been trying to get her sort of conservative husband like on board with us for a long time. Like, no, they're not like that. I swear. And then he walks in and he's like, all right, I'm going to give him a shot. What's up with your baby's Baby's dick? dick, I knew it. I knew it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But. My sons were born in East Tennessee 11 and 12 years ago, and I feel like they were born right before when i say right before a year or two or so before that conversation had reached the south or east tennessee at least like when yeah. when, when mine were born it was still you just it was just automatic. it wasn't even it's a just, question it right it's just what you did and so we did it without thinking twice and then within a couple of years you know liberals and hippies and stuff and i'm not saying they're wrong i don't mean that pejoratively but pe- people like that crunchy people start being like hey we shouldn't be snipping babies dicks like this and and then it's only progressed from there. So I didn't, but you're in Chickamauga. So I didn't yeah. know, I didn't know what the current situation was there, but yeah, you know, apparently I, I looked it up while we were having technical difficulties. Cause I was curious. Uh, cause you asked like, how'd how, you what, look it up? <laughs> What'd you type in? Cause you might want to delete that prevalence of circumcision. Okay. Um, and it varies wildly. Like yeah. the most circumcised country, unsurprisingly is real. Um, yeah. Yeah, over 90% there, but also apparently most Muslim majority countries, they also circumcise. And then after the month, so it goes the Jew country, the Muslim countries, then us. Right. And then there's a pretty big drop off after us from we're like 75% circumcised to the next closest to us is South Korea at 58%, then Australia at 45. So that's the minority. That just shows you that monotheism is all the same. Right, yeah. So that's what it is, right? Mono- yeah. you're right. It is that, that is, dude. That is that is what that is. There, isn't dude, it? It's Abra- the, Abrahamic, Abrahamic religion. religion. So that's an Abrahamic they're, religion yeah. thing. Abrahamic religion, dude. They're all the go. same. Like, dude, they're all the fucking same. Like, that's what people don't like. Whenever somebody like when when someone says praise Allah, they're saying that's the, they're the same as saying praise God. Like when whenever like a Southern Baptist gets upset at the word Allah, it's the craziest thing to me because I'm like, that just means God in their language. You, they're talking to the same yeah. guy you're talking to. Like, and they 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 have basically the same rules that you have. It's it's just that like some of them believe them so much. Yeah. You know, that like they do some wild shit. But like, dude, all of it, like the that the the Abrahamic religions, like, dude, they're like even the like the Quran, like when you put it next to you know, the Bible, it's so fucking similar. Like they're all cut and paste shit. And and all of them come from like this ancient fucking sun god shit from Egypt that predates like all of it that is all like, you know, basically is all about star worship and shit. And then yeah. yada yada yada, Harry Potter Star Wars. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's the same, it's we just do it over and over again. Right. Yes. Back to Wainers, though. Okay. Uh, So I want my son. I wanted my son to be able to come good when I heard that 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 was part of it. But then Amber was like, "But he'll get made fun of or whatever." And like, how? Who? What? That's what I said. I was how like, often are people going to see his dick at school? And then, I mean, I, you know, I know right. it can and does happen. Right. But like, we had one kid that wasn't circumcised. And don't get me wrong, it got brought up. Like, but like, it was just one of those things where like, we saw it, it was different. It got mentioned, but it's not like that was his whole identity. And it's not like we talk about it now. Like, but also now that we know that his comes have been so much better, joke's on us, in my opinion. Right. 
yeah, I was going to say, you know, obviously, like, I'm snipped. I'm from the generation where we almost all are. And, uh, you know, I ain't never bothered me none. But they do reportedly say that. But I don't know how you, like, unless you got circumcised later After. in life, how could you, you know, how could you really well, know that? You know what I mean? Well, like, well, if it's just scientific nerve endings. Well, it's scientific because, like right, I was about to say because the nerve endings. Yeah. But I mean, you know, still, but yeah. So, and anyway, you said earlier, you were like, you, I don't remember how you framed it, but you were something like, you know, in the Jewish community, there's <laughs> anator dicks or something like that. And I was like, that sounds like something that just you say, is that not something? Cause I got drunk one night with our buddy Tushar who's Indian and they don't circumcise it generally. Cause they got a thousand gods. Exactly. Exactly. So just that one asshole. The more guy, gods get... you have, the yeah. uh, more foreskin you have as well. Yeah, they got a thousand gods with four thousand arms between them and shit. But uh, he, they're not circumcised. Me and him was drunk talking about it one night, and uh, I had the revelation. I was like, I was like, your dicks kind of look like elephant trunks. That's yeah, funny. Yeah, it's, like, yeah, you know, yeah, it's like you yeah, got the yeah. Yeah. elephant trunk dicks. Is that why y'all do it? Because you're like, you know, kinship with your. Uh, you know, your elephant buddies over there or something. But then I started making the elephant noise, talking about it was too short dick and stuff. So still times, sometimes when I see him, I'll do the, you know. That's thing. why they got to arrange their marriages too, because if they didn't, they orgasm so good, they'd just be out fucking everything, dude. That's why I, well, too I short mean, don't get tied like down, that. bro. I was about to say, yeah, I think a lot of them still do uh, get out there and fuck everything. But I mean, yeah, not, not anyway. Uh, Ant eater, I'm saying, is that something y'all came up with at school, or did for, you for the read or see that somewhere? No, for the circumcised, okay. for the circum, the dude that wasn't circumcised, yes. it was. I said it looked like an ant eater because it was the, you know, it looked like that, right? Yeah, that's what I assumed, and that makes all the sense in the world to me. It's pretty good for you know middle middle school standards type stuff, but like. You've never heard that? You, I thought that was I, like. See, this is what I, this is my whole point. This is what I was just what I'm trying to say. You presented that as yeah. like the they of course are universally referred to <laughs> as anteater dicks, as I believe we pre briss And it's like, yeah, we're and you know, we're all the rest of the world except for like your group of buddies, or whatever, is like, what? I mean, again, it makes sense, but you talk about it like it's in the Oxford English dictionary. <laughs> and it's not like i don't think i've ever heard that again <laughs> it does make sense but i've Dude, never let me tell you, know. you something it's funny you say that because i would i i wish that i could just off the top of my head just vomit all of the, our terms that we have like that because like the more i think about it man like you know like i remember seinfeld used to talk all the time about like uh you know, when when people would ask him, like, oh, were you the class clown or whatever? And he was like, at, he's like, I mean, yes, but like every he's like, every one of my friends was funny. You have no idea. He's like, everyone was funny. And like, I really like in looking back on it, like my group of friends and I know you can relate. We're like four middle schoolers. And 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 I'm talking about like in the genre of comedy, we're some of the smartest, most creative fucking people on the planet like like when it came to putting other people down <laughs> right and being funny i'm talking mensa level motherfuckers well it's like i mean john mulaney it must be a universal truth because john mulaney has that great bit about exactly that where he's yeah. like middle schoolers are more savage than anybody yep. it's like they, they pick out the, they somehow inherently know the thing that you're most sensitive yeah. about. And he was like, look at that dude. He got feminine hips. <laughs> that's the thing I'm, <laughs> the thing sensitive, I'm sensitive about. about. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> and so, you know, that's just like a known fact, dude. Yeah. Middle school playground dog. But my, buddies are, but my buddies are still like that, man. And like, dude, some right. of your buddies too. Like whenever we hang out at like, whenever we hang out at Christmas, you know, like when, you know, like key and, and Thompson and like, if Robbie's involved or whatever, I guarantee you, oh, I know no. I get, uh, porno is the biggest example, oh, but yeah. like, and I know we're way off topic here and we'll get back to Middleton for anybody that's like, yes. what the fuck is this oh, show? Don't worry. Even? I was going to force it back. I, to no, that. I know. I definitely. I want to know, but I do want to say this. If you hung out with us, with all of our friends and no one knew, any of us and someone said all right you got to go in here and you got to pick out the two professional comedians i don't think you'd go to us first <laughs> i don't oh, think yeah. you'd get to us first That's and we are point. i don't think yeah. you would i think you'd go porno number one you'd be like yeah especially when you found out his name was porno you'd be right. like well fucking that guy you know yeah, yeah. 
Absolutely. I think you're right about that. But yeah, no, it is funny how you just point out how derailed. Like this, I asked you about Kate Milton. 45 seconds later, you said something about a BBL. Do you know what that is? Yeah, that's and, how we got and, here. And then, and then dicks for the next yeah. eight minutes or whatever. Yeah. So, no, I don't know what BB. Also, I don't even remember the context in which you brought that acronym up. Somebody, there, somebody was suggesting big, big, beautiful lips. No, you, dude, you're kind of so close. You're dancing all around. Yeah, someone suggested that the reason she hadn't been seen is because she went to get a BBL. You were really close when you went with the big, like when you were going with the dick thing, because it's a Brazilian butt lift, which is ah. to get to get a big butt, which big yeah. black dicks love. Like you're yes. you you like almost yeah. circular logic. Yourself well, then with the there. big beautiful lips, I started thinking plastic surgery, and I was like, you know, yes. how white women be just fucking. Like, yeah, doing this to their lips and shit recently, and uh, but yeah, I've heard of Brazilian butt lift. I should have been able to get that. So and what? How does that knock you out of commission for like no, a long time? Dude, that's, dude, what, that's what I'm about to say. I'm there's pretty a, sure these thoughts get them on Friday and be back to twerking on Sunday. Well, you know? there's several of these I conspiracy thought. theories that <laughs> you, you number one, you're correct on that. There's several of these conspiracy theories that I can easily knock out of the, the way by just logic, which your logic right there is sound. Like yeah, she would already be back. But number two, like. I'm sorry. I know that Queen Elizabeth is dead and therefore like a lot of the shroud and mystery surrounding the royal family, the veil has sort of been lifted and we're definitely entering an even more modernized version of what a monarchy is. But Kate Middleton, even though she she got her, you know, aristocratic status by marrying into the family, she 100 percent, in my opinion, she takes on this role and she oh, yeah. she's not getting a fucking Brazilian butt lift because that's not becoming of a goddamn princess. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I yeah, think I agree with you. Because people would be able to tell. She's, I've thought before, I don't know much at all about these people, but I've seen clips of her and stuff before where I have thought like, wasn't she like kind of a, like she wasn't born no princess level, right? No, but. It, but and I thought it's like, but she's really embraced this whole thing yeah. because she yeah. like she conducts her, which I know that's like, I mean that's that's why both, she that's got why picked. they hate Meghan Markle so much is because right. she like don't do that like that's the yeah you know, that's why you that's the only reason <laughs> right. But you have to those are the rules if you want to play the yes. game with them in the first place. So it's like, was she a full blown commoner or is this being like no, no, okay, her look, dad look. owned a bank? No, no, but no. Wasn't right. a Duke. And so, yeah, you know, so she was rich as fuck, but not a it's, Viscountess. It's that. So, well, like the trash. word, com the word, yeah, the word commoner here is relative. Like right. to, to the royal family, yes, absolutely a commoner. Uh, because to the royal family, fucking. Elon Musk is a commoner. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Because he has no arist aristocratic title. Now, right. her family, uh, from what I read on her, and I don't remember if I did this in any type of episode here, if it was just like independently, her family, I don't think they come from like generational money, but her dad did pretty well for himself. And her mom, uh, and, and by the way, everybody knows this is kind of how this show goes, but this has never been more true than now. I'm pulling this straight out of my butt. Her mom had some sort of, she started some sort of like partying and catering company or something where like, I don't know, she had something to do with kids parties and she created these like packages or whatever that she would sell where it was like, these individual packages like, oh, you're having a party for 25 kids. You can buy 25 of these individual packages and you open them and each kid, it's supplies for all the. And anyways, she turned that into like this business for like kids parties and like it just kind of, you know, started started growing and blah, blah, blah. Turn this into like a fucking, you know, billion dollar company empire of like selling goods for children's parties and then got into like merchandising or whatever sold that company um so i'm pretty sure self-made woman but turned it into a shit ton of money and this all happened before she met prince william but again none of that matters because to them that is still a commoner she did not she was not the duchess what? she was so not none of that hate did that with the no no, no her mom no no, no okay, her mom what, did that's, okay that's what i thought you said yeah. but then by the end of, okay all right yeah so, but anyway, right. So she wouldn't get a baby out. Cause again, I've seen, you she know, wouldn't. there She's... was a clip of that. Do you remember that clip of at the, I don't know if it was at the queen's funeral or his dad's coronation or something like that. There was this 
this Asian delivery guy yeah. who somehow got behind the lines <laughs> yeah. where he wasn't supposed to be and like almost got fucking shot. And he's just like yeah. slapping the, the bag of, of wontons and stuff like, no, no, it's cool. It's cool. Whatever. And they're like, and anyway, and they let him go and it was, it went viral cause it was super funny. But anyway, Hey, I just remember Kate in that. I could see her awareness of like, he, he shouldn't be here. You know what I mean? Like right. she, looked like well that's that was almost uh uncouth you know yeah. what i mean that almost went and then and, and i remember thinking like bitch you ain't even one of these but, but like you have to you know you got to assimilate yeah like i'm not gonna saying let you in at all you i'm know? not right i'm not saying that any of it which, is right or wrong but like which is also why and we haven't even gotten to this yet but if there's any kind of princess diana type conspiracy theories about this or whatever they don't seem like they track to me either because she again she plays the game she's exactly not like she's not like diana or megan she's like she's a you know the platonic ideal of a fucking british princess or whatever i feel like that so is, that is true except for one of the conspiracies speculates that perhaps she was cheating on william yes. i was gonna that's what i was gonna say if we were, we were gonna posit our own i was gonna be like yeah she got she got caught in in a lurid tryst with a with an Egyptian antiquities dealer yeah. or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And in a fit of rage, you know, uh, he fucking put her into a coma by knocking her into a 16th century Chinese vase or something. Driving like through that. a tunnel really fast. Yeah, or that. And now, and that's why there hasn't been some kind of, you know some kind of either cover story or body double or something like that, because like she's in a coma, you know, like he, he put her in a coma on accident uh, when he found out that, you know, she was porking hot med, the mummy stuff guy in my story. And that is uh, that that's another leading theory is that she's in a coma, uh, that she's right. currently in a coma. Now here's the deal. And, we're and they're talking. waiting to see if she comes because if she comes out of it, then they'll have a cover story and she'll play along because she plays ball and everything will be fine. She does. But if she don't come out of it, then you know what? Then what? And see, here's the thing: like all of these conspiracies started basically the moment she didn't show up for her first thing, which like at that point it's like okay, these people are QAnon level. This is insane. But, well, that's what I'm wondering. Like. She, showed up for what i know you said it's like anytime he's there she should like how many things has she missed like things that were like normally she ought to been there but she wasn't there like i mean i don't it, have is it a bunch i like, mean i don't have like any concrete examples but at this point we're talking about three and four months worth of shit like there's yeah. been plenty of events because dude with these type of people everything is a goddamn event. Like their entire, their entire life is ribbon cutting. You know what I mean? Like every day is, is so dude, they have to put on four different tuxedos a day. You know what I mean? And, and she's, yeah. and dude, the, cause the thing is like her life before Elizabeth died was still limelight. But when Elizabeth died, she became next in line as the, 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 the queen, uh, not queen regent, but, uh, 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 the queen well what's the what's it when queen consort queen consort yeah queen consort i don't know if that's right that's definitely a term the queen but... the queen that's not that's only the queen because her husband's the king that right that one i think it's right. queen consort um but like as soon as charles got coronated and now william is the heir like her life changed and so things you know she is now expected to i, I assume be at more things and there's more media on her yeah. especially dude because in the middle of all of this, like while all of this is going on, another thing happened with the royal family, which is that Charles got diagnosed with cancer. That's right. happened in and, the middle of all of this. And and he's like Steve Jobs in it, ain't he? Mm -hmm. That's he's, so how are you going to wait your whole life? Makes no sense. Waiting on your mama to die so you I can know. be the king. And it fine. She she lived to be one hundred and forty three, and yep. you she finally dies, and you get in there, and you got what maybe ten good years left yeah. at, the, at the outside, and then you get cancer, and you're like, I'm just gonna treat this with fruit and time. Like I don't. That's crazy. Maybe you're the being king. king don't hit. You can have the but like you they got to have some like king cocktails that uh, regular people can't even get. That well, can, I, th I, like, I think that's the point. 
You, you know what I mean? Like, but I know I ain't talking about medieval fucking right. newt size shit or whatever that the goddamn castle apothecary is coming up with. I'm talking like the same shit that Steve Jobs could have had, but right. didn't. Right. He, I know the King of England could get that shit if, for sure. Uh, if he, but he just chooses not to. It's like you just opting to die. It's right. It makes no sense to me. Well, that's that's where yeah, that's where Mark made me feel like a real dumbass because when I shared it with the the group, Mark was like, Jesus Christ, like you know, I know he's a king, but there's not like elixirs and potions and blah blah blah. Right. And I was like, well, he is the king. He's probably got access to some of that stuff. And he's like, do you realize how stupid you sound right now? I was like, oh yeah, you're right. Like that stuff doesn't that that stuff is. It really expensive chemo and radiation exactly. and all that right. shit. And those it's like, are yeah, the elixirs and those stuff. Are, yeah, yeah right. that is what that is. And people like, 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 because again, if that stuff existed, Steve Jobs would have had it too. <laughs> because, right. Because money is the thing that those things get you. Right. Um, well, Steve Jobs famously, you know, like refused. Like Steve right. Jobs could have survived the cancer he had. It's like a known fact. The only right. reason he didn't is because he tried to do this alternative medicine horse shit and got himself unalived. And now the king of England is reportedly doing the same thing. It's they're in they're in shambles. Cause also like what the I mean what's up with Harry during all this? Dude like, Harry Harry's how, you know him and Megan are over here trying to get a new fucking Netflix deal. It's fucking crazy. I saw a tweet yeah. the other day. I wish I had it in front of me that was like that was like uh, the the princess is missing. The king has cancer. If this was the 1700s, France the would be French would be invade. invading. Yeah, yeah. It was the 1300s. Yeah, it was like yeah, the, a, the yeah the the younger prince is deposed in exile. <laughs> yeah. The the yeah the princess is missing and the king is uh, whatever treating himself with herbs and tonics. Yeah, that was a good tweet. It is wild. They're going. They're really going through some shit right now. So anyway, all right. Hey, uh, what's the, what's the Photoshop? Thing, okay uh, element of this because I, I i tried to, when i first saw this it was on twitter and everything i clicked was talking about pictures and photoshops and I, and I couldn't i couldn't piece together what the fuck people were talking about all right so they tried did they put out some pictures trying to prove like no she's fine and people yes. were like that's clearly photoshop yes. is that what so, happened yeah okay. so basically and this is what i've been like now for the record like it's really funny because of what this show is. You'd think that I would have like been following it for a little bit longer, but I, I kept seeing little things about it. And mostly I was just like, this is just, again, this is British QAnon bullshit. Like it's, there's nothing to it. Like she probably just got sick. They haven't seen her and they're making stuff up. But then again, after it went on for a little while, I was like, okay, it'd be one thing if, you, you know, this was the 1920s and like you, you had to take a picture standing still with one of those flashing things that exploded. Yeah. But like, yeah. she, if she, she could easily just prove all this wrong by like stepping onto a balcony and going, hello, you know what I mean? And I was like, I thought I mean, hell she could toy the selfie. selfie or whatever, right. you know but what I mean? Not, like I'm sure, I'm sure she, I know it's not becoming, but I mean, I'm yeah. sure even she has a fucking cell phone or whatever. Like, well, well that's, and that's where this, that's where, that's where this kind of this is that's where this kind of gets really funny because i was like i was like okay yes true nobody owes anybody anything like you're you're totally allowed to for nobody to see you that's true but like people are getting upset and people are being insane about this you could just one little tweet and it's all fucking over well i guess they decided we're gonna do that so they put out a, a mother's day uh, in England, because every, you know, like everything they do, it's wrong. Their Mother's Day has already happened. It was like, okay. a it was like a week or two ago or something like that. Um, and so they put out a picture that was like, hey, everything's fine. And it was her sitting down uh, with the kids. And allegedly, w William wasn't in it because allegedly he took the picture. They put it out and it's like, oh, everything's fine. Like the AP picked it up. They were putting it out everywhere. Like Kate Middleton finally comes out of hiding in this picture or whatever. And there for like a solid 45 seconds, it seemed like everything was good until someone just zoomed in on it and was like, hey, look at, look at her hand right here on her kid. And you could notice like these, like these little waves where like it was very clear that they had photoshopped all of them together. Like anybody that has ever seen a photoshopped photo could a hundred percent tell. So that, okay. I don't know whether to take away from that, that, okay, 
AI and photo altering technologies and all these things everybody's so worried about, I guess they're still not all the way to like dystopian matrix level yet. Like if they're, they're still not perfect because you would think if anybody had access to the best like photo right. editing technology or capabilities, it would be the British Royal family. So maybe it's think. just not there, which is encouraging. Or the other way to look at it is like, what the fuck are they doing? having like a 14 year old just yes. photoshop a silly ass picture in the era of AI and photorealistic CGI and all this stuff that we know people can do with faking things. Right. Fakes and shit. You put out something that is noticed in 45 seconds. It's like, and you didn't think anybody was going to be able to tell like it's right. pretty, pretty inexcusable. It is definitely weird. I mean, this is, this is wild. Like I said, I didn't know all the details of this. This well, is pretty wild. So, like, so Kate, so like somebody points that out and then Kate, like from her or she has someone from her account put out a thing. She's like, oh, ha ha. I'm sorry. I'm an amateur photographer and I was trying to clean up the photograph and I just don't have good enough skills. That's on me, blah, 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 you know, whatever. And then someone pointed out, they were like, um, that tree in the background, that's not in bloom right now. <laughs> And and somebody and this fucking like herbologist got on there and was like, yeah, this is not a current picture. That tree would not be in bloom right now. And then someone gets on there and looks at the actual picture of her face and lays it over a, an official uh, picture of her from this like magazine that she'd done. And it was that picture. And these like FBI level uh, forensics investigator confirmed like this is the same picture. So that yeah. wasn't the only thing that was photoshopped in there. Oh, wow. And so then immediately after that, the the pre the royal family contacts the AP press. The AP sends it out to everybody and they put out a kill notice on the picture. They're like, this picture's got to go. It's clearly been doctored. Right. So so th that wasn't real. And now they're speculating like. Well, the sh th was that even Kate that said that shit? And like, right. as you said, like, dude, how the fuck are you letting this happen? They should have right. the best. Right. Right. It, it must be something maybe, or maybe she like, maybe she run off with yeah. the Egyptian antiquities yeah. dealer or something like that. Maybe she's in hiding with her, with her uh, paramour or something yeah. because, because otherwise I don't, yeah, they seem to be mishandling it. You have to know it's going to get noticed. It already has been noticed. It's only going to become more and more scrutinized. It, you got to have something. You got to have it, some kind of plan of action for this, and it definitely seems like they don't. And so, I mean, what the fuck is going to I mean, happen? Like I said, at first, I was like, these are people just hungry for there to be some type of conspiracy theory, and the royal family is like such fertile soil for all of that shit, what with you know, Diana and all that shit. But like at this point, it would be more bizarre if nothing was going on. Right. Because how, right. how do you fumble nothing is going on and we are fucking up and making it seem like something's going on? I mean, there's no way. It's like you said, she could just, she could just step outside and wave, like right. you said, or whatever, and it would take care of it. And the fact that she hasn't seems to indicate that something is up. It's all, but that's what I'm saying. It's weird that they don't even have a cover story. It makes right. me feel like there's like that there's loose ends here. You know what I mean? That like they can't put out a cover story because it could later be proven false because right. either she is out of pocket, yes, or they can't is control in a, her, or is in a coma or something, and they don't know whether or not she's going to come out of it yet. So they can't. You know what I'm saying? They can't. Yeah. Um, they can't cover up cover it up in the wrong direction because otherwise, why would you not have a cover story? You surely would. Um, I know. Especially, I mean, again, these people, wild. like, they have cover stories for fucking everything. They've been sidestepping the Andrew bullshit for years, man. Like, the the right. NFL Combine. Like, they've been masterfully doing that. And another, uh, uh, one last note. Again, and this is, again, like I say, this is all that I know about it, which is nothing. I just know the speculation. Um, but this was, I thought this was interesting. Uh, Stephen Colbert is under fire from the a lot of people in the British press uh, because Colbert did a joke about all this stuff, like a lighthearted, you know, monologue joke or whatever. And they were a lot of people in the British tabloid press and uh, it ca caught wind from the royal family that they'd made a comment. They were astounded and surprised that Colbert had not uh, sought their permission to make this joke because 
That standard what? practice over there, by the way, they oh really yeah but, over there the media and them yeah right, the media and them have a like an understanding like they don't say anything about the royal family unless they run it past him and for some reason they try to act like seventeen seventy six never that's what I was about to say. It's like you forget that L we handed y'all like we're right. gonna ask y'all for shit but also my thing with that is like there is a zero percent chance that that is the first late night royal family right. joke that's ever been made in American history like. I guarantee you, David Letterman was was bagging on fucking for sure. Charles back then in the nineties and shit. You know what I mean? Charles and Camilla and all that stuff. You right? Tell me that wasn't fodder for late night stuff. Like it had to be. You sure. Know? We just probably they didn't hear about that. it because of Twitter, I guess. I guess yeah, maybe that yeah, maybe they didn't deign to watch American television back then. But now, yeah, things are unavoidable. I don't know. Uh, this here episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex, bay buzz. Guys, remember the days when you're always ready to go? Things change as you get older, but that's all right. They don't have to. Now you can increase your performance and get that extra old-timey confidence in bed back in your early day type stuff. Listen up, Blue Chew. Dot com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or you can just be ready to get down whenever an opportunity comes up. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. That's the best part. It's all done down there on the internet there which means no more visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made here in the U.S. of A, prepared and shipped direct to your door in a very discreet package. Cho, tell them more. i tell you what, Trey, I love it. It makes my weenie harder than trying to figure out what's going on with Kate Middleton. i tell you, hey. it, it works. It's tremendous. And by the way, uh, if, if you're skeptical, you can try it for a month and see for yourself. But my absolute favorite time of the month and my wife's favorite time is when that discreet envelope shows up. I've been using Blue Chew for about five months. And the thing is, there don't have to be nothing wrong with your wiener to use it. You can just get a little extra confidence because they say first impressions are important. Well, what about lasting impressions? They say there's nothing sexier than confidence. And Blue Chew can help give you the confidence where it counts. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it we got a special deal for our listeners try blue chew for free when you use our promo code poa at checkout just pay five dollars shipping that's bluechew.com promo code poa to receive your first month for free visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information and we thank blue chew for sponsoring the podcast and giving us a brand new wainer skew speaking of american media you wanted to talk about the oscars right they just happened six days ago five days ago and when I this do. comes out before someday. we day i had shows in the... dc so i didn't watch a second of it but i do know who most of the winners were and whatnot oh, I, I didn't watch, watch any the... of it either oh okay well you it's said a, you wanted to I, talk about it i, I do you... i do <laughs> buddy that's oh, not ever okay. stopped us before all right i know i know i used to you know my my dad my dad at the video store and big movie person and everything growing up we used to watch the oscars together like every single well, year i used to watch the oscars Every year, like I made it a point to watch it, like a Super Bowl or something for, for me. But I probably haven't done that in, I'd say, at least seven or eight years now. Maybe I more. Was I was going to say, me not watching it is actually a subject I wanted to cover, and you sort of just answered it there. I watched, I, I got the highlights, because that's what I do now. Like, I'm not, like, look, it's not something Amber's interested in, so I'm not going to make Amber sit through three hours of something that I can then get. I treat the Oscars like I treat the NFL draft, like that Bill Burr thing, like, I'm not going to sit through it when tomorrow I can get all the highlights of the things that I wanted to see. But that's what I was going to ask you. Cause like, dude, I'm the same way. The Oscars to me, I, I won't say that I treated it exactly like the Super Bowl, but I did get very fucking excited because like, you know, uh, obviously me and you are not like, we, we are technically in the same industry because it's under right. the, uh, it's under the umbrella of the entertainment industry. And it is something that both of us aspire to. Like me and you right. both have had dreams of sitting there, accepting yeah. one or be, just being invited. Uh, but like, so to me, it's always been something that I felt at least a little a part of like, oh, this is this is our thing. And as stupid as that sounds, like it, it just, it feels that way. But I stopped, I mean, I, again, I just kind of stopped watching. I think maybe it was, it has because of the age of like, the internet where like instead of watching i can just watch something else and kind of see it live tweeted you know what i mean and i'm like oh well if something really cool happens 
I'll get to see that. And I don't have to, because dude, most of it is boring. Like yeah. most of it is boring. Yep. Yes, that's true. I think for me, uh, for me personally, it was just a matter of like, I became less of a movie buff over the course of my life, which I've always attributed to the rise of television. The, the, the time I used to spend watching movies, cause I used to watch like every fucking thing that came out. I had a huge back catalog of stuff, like a lot of classics and stuff I hadn't seen, especially if you're talking about, like I've seen Casablanca and I've seen Citizen Kane, but if you're talking about like that era of movies, there's tons that I hadn't seen. But the modern era though, from my teen years into like my thirties, I watched like everything, trash and artsy, fartsy shit alike. But then TV started hitting so hard. Right. And I started watching more and more TV shows, and which meant I watched less and less movies. I kind of just fell out of cinema right. and into television. And I've always just attributed that to my life. Because I used to watch every single Best Picture nominee every year. Like of I made course. a point to. If I hadn't seen it, I'd look it up. I'd I'd watch all the foreign nominees, the anime, any movie that you know that was nominated, I made it a point to watch. For and stuff Best like that. Picture, correct. Also Not like, like uh, costume. No, 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 not like costume. I mean a movie that was nominated on the movies, like the best animated pictures. Right. Yeah, I'd yeah, watch yeah. all those too. The best foreign movies. I'd yeah, get best those short. from Netflix. Yeah, I, not the shorts. The shorts are hard to find. Or they not, are. probably not now. Not anymore, yeah. Not now you they're probably right at your fingertips. But back then it was hard to get your hands on the shorts. But yeah, I was a Netflix subscriber since two thousand three, like getting the DVDs in the Me mail. Too. I was in high school getting the DVDs in the mail. And so I would use Netflix to get those uh more obscure movies and shit. But anyway, um, yeah, that just kind of changed. Now I only watch the big one. Like this year's nominees, I saw, I've seen. I saw eight out of 10. Yeah, I'm nowhere close to that. Uh, well, I've seen, uh, I saw Oppenheimer, of course. I saw Barbie. I saw Poor Things, The Holdovers, and Anatomy of a Fall. Yeah. Uh, I've seen five. That's it, yeah. I think. The uh, yeah, surprisingly, one of the ones the the one that I like wanted to see the most, I still haven't seen, which is American Fiction, and the only reason is because Amber, me and Amber, want to watch it together, and they have that time hasn't lined up, which this is a very frustrating thing for a, a movie lover. Is like whenever there's a movie that I know it's not an Amber thing, I get excited because I'm like, well, I can just watch that any fucking time. But when there's one where Amber's like, oh, I want to watch that too, now I'm like. I have to find this moment yeah. and yeah. we'll, and it'll be at night. And she's like, Hey, do you want to start that movie? And I'll be like, okay, can you give me two hours right now? Cause a lot of times what will happen is we'll put on a movie in 35 minutes in. She's like, Oh, I totally forgot. I need to go blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, can, can we just, can we just wait till you got two hours? You know? So I haven't seen that one, even though it's one of the ones that I really wanted to see, but Loved Anatomy of a Fall. Hey, while we're here though, and you were you're already talking about having seen Oppenheimer, that was one of the things I wanted to discuss. Because I mean, unless I'm mistaken, th this is this used to be a thing that happened uh, quite a bit, I guess. But over the past couple of years, maybe not so much. Oppenheimer won for Best Picture this year, and I feel like it has become less and less of a thing for a movie that made almost a billion dollars yeah. to it, also win the Best Picture. And I I'm love it. So glad that you said that because that was one of the, th I knew we were going to talk about the Oscars and that was a thing that I had written down in my notes that I wanted to talk about was that dynamic. You are right. Now for years and years, a lot of times stuff that hit Titanic box office wise was also gone with the wind. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. Like for a long time, that's just, that's just that's all it why was. It made basically. the money. Right, exactly. And then that changed at the beginning with the blockbuster era, which most people think started with it's Jaws, Steven Spielberg. It's wild. Steven Spielberg will kind of bookend this story because a lot of people think the blockbuster era was ushered in by Steven Spielberg with Jaws. And of course, Star Wars really kicked it into high gear. And then things changed from that point, right? Dude, can I but, tell you something about Jaws real quick? Because I, I don't know if I'll ever get the opportunity again. Yeah. I've been reading a lot of old movie stuff. And did you know that even like right before it was about to be edited and like come out everyone involved with jaws steven spielberg including included was like almost wanted to distance themselves from the movie because they yeah. thought that it was going to suck and yeah i, I heard part, that in partly the because it was such a nightmare shoot the, yes the all shark didn't work and he didn't get yeah. all, all kinds of stuff he wanted and everything kept fucking up and 
you know, yeah, they were not confident. And I, in yeah, and all. I heard I heard that said in the context to illustrate the point of like you never know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you fucking never know. So, anyways, go on. No, you don't. But yeah, so, but in the nineties though, there was a stretch where it was Oppenheimer style movies like yeah. uh, Forrest Gump beat Pulp Fiction, yeah. right? Uh, Braveheart uh beat sense and sensibility right? right and uh titanic beat whatever right and those mo- all three of those movies are like three of the biggest movies of the year they also right. won best picture and then in 1998 steven spielberg put out saving private ryan which and, was the biggest mm-hmm. movie of the year and was a best picture nominee and seemed to be a shoe in right and at the same time harvey weinstein at the weinstein company exactly had put out Shakespeare in love. That's the screenplay, by the way. And launched, um, launched a here, a heretofore unheard of PR blitz and marketing campaign for Shakespeare in love, which ultimately resulted in it winning and beating saving private Ryan because Steven Spielberg refused to play those games. Nowadays there's Oscar season. Yeah. Oscar campaigning is a thing. There was kind of a, uh, a bit of a, uh, kerfuffle last year with that what's her name rachel gainsborough or something like that she was in that movie with mark Marin, fucking rachel something another there there was a big coordinated blitz from all these like a-listers trying to get her an Uh oscar basically it backfired and and it it did backfire because people were like well this is a little fucking egregious but that type of shit for this year that type of shit it's like accepted now it didn't used to be a thing that started with Shakespeare in Love and Harvey Weinstein, that was Harvey Weinstein's idea in 1998. And St- Steven Spielberg, he started what's called a whisper campaign, which mm-hmm. is where you talk shit about your the opposing other, yeah. nominees. And he was like, he's like, that movie's nothing but the opening scene at the beach, the battle at the storm in the beaches. Then it's two and a half hours of sentimental bullshit, right? Which I could not so, more heart, no, heartily disagree that's with. That's the worst thing he's ever done, by the right, way. I know. That's what, that's what I was going to say. Too. It's like, <laughs> to me, this is the worst thing far and away that Harvey Weinstein's ever done. <laughs> nothing else even comes close. Because, But he started that. This was going on, and the people at the studio with Spielberg saw this and knew it, like recognized what was happening. And they told Spielberg, they were like, Harvey's doing this shit. He's got a plan. He's trying to scoop you with Shakespeare in love or whatever. You need to push back. And Steven Spielberg was like, I'm not doing that. I, he was like, I, I don't care. Yeah. He was like, he was like, he's like, my movie will speak for itself. It, you know, I, I'm not going to play these fucking games with Harvey. Like I made the movie, the movie stands on its own merits. I'm not doing that shit. And they were like, okay, you might lose though. And he was like, that's what it's going to be. That's what it's going to be. Fuck it. Yeah. Right. And then, it did lose. And I remember, like I said, I watched every, every one of these, my dad, I was 12 years old that year. My dad was irate, bro. Yeah. It was like watching your team get upset in the yeah. Super Bowl or something. He was like, he was like, what the fuck is this shit? He, yeah. But he didn't know all the backstory with Harvey Weinstein and right. stuff, but he was like, this is horse shit. And that kind of shifted uh, the way the Oscars worked forevermore. Another thing that happened though, was that blockbusters became there aren't a lot of movies like Oppenheimer or Barbie. There's most not. Years. Most of the movies that make a billion dollars are Marvel. like tape, tape movies that yeah. are not best picture worthy. So that I think, also, I think Endgame that also was best picture a, worthy, in my opinion. But you think what was? Uh, Endgame. But oh, it's, yeah, sure. But you had to, but in, in fairness to everyone else well, on Earth, you would you have know, had to follow 15 movies. So, well, there's like, Every now and then there'll be something like that, like the Lord of the Rings movies were like yeah, that. They were sure. colossal blockbusters that people are like, these also hit. Right. But like the two things have gotten separated kind of culturally yeah. in the cinematic world. And so that's why you don't see it happening as much. But I also find it, you know, nice that it happened. Also, uh, another movie that was like that, the reason why we have 10 Best Picture nominees now instead of five, it was five for years and years and years, was because a blockbuster – People were pissed off when it was not nominated for yep. Best Picture in 2008, and that was The Dark Knight yep. by Christopher Nolan. The Dark Knight was not nominated, and people and, were like, this is horseshit. You and who won that want. year? Uh, I'll uh, look it up. I'll uh, look it up. Keep talking. I, uh, 2008. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, when you say it, I'll know. But uh, I obviously. can tell you this. It wasn't as good as Dark Knight. Oh, yeah, it was. Right. No Country for Old Men. Never mind. Oh, yeah. That was, was good, fine. But, uh, it should have been but, fucking nominated, but that's – And yeah. then people got so pissed off. 
they expanded the field to 10 movies and they call that the dark Knight rule. That's why and since then you've had like black Panther was nominated. Joker was nominated, you know, so shit like that does slide in there every now and then now, but yeah, you're right. It, uh, it is not often any the case anymore that like a huge blockbuster also wins and deserves to win best picture when that used to be the standard for a long, long time. But now things have changed, buddy. Now, granted, it's also not normal for a historical biopic to be a huge blockbuster. It's right. just that, and this is another thing I wanted to talk about. It's just that this historical biopic happened to be directed by one Christopher Nolan, who picked up his first directorial Oscar, and I say a resounding yes, the man yes, quite well deserved. Uh. Damn, that was Christopher Nolan's first, first Oscar. First, first yeah. Oscar. Yeah. Yeah. It's like one of my favorite all-time, and I know we've talked about it before, but not on here. One of my favorite all-time Academy Awards fun facts was that uh, Three Six Mafia won an Oscar before, before Martin Leo. Scorsese yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. Before Scorsese, even. Yeah. I mean, Leo, yeah. too, before both of them. But, Dude, yeah. Uh, and speaking of that, Scorsese got swept again, uh, and – which which I'm starting, you know, you're talking about the um, Oscar campaigns, which kind of sort of leads into a couple of things that I wanted to talk about. And this is something that I've felt with DiCaprio for a while, and now possibly Martin Scorsese, is that I kind of think it almost has to be this way, that perhaps DiCaprio has a very I'll let my work speak for itself opinion of himself, much like Spielberg. Yeah. Or it's just that DiCaprio has the unfortunate uh, skill of he's so fucking good all the time. He's consistently good all the time. It's just that every year that every year that he's good, someone will come out of nowhere and and be good for the first time ever. And it just be great. It's kind of to use a sports analogy. People have put football fans have pointed out, obviously, this isn't true anymore, but during the Brady era of the Eli Patriots, Manning, but it's like I'm talking about coaches. Bill Bell is yeah. like, if you look at most of the years from 2001 to 2019 or whatever, with a couple of genuine exceptions, most of those years, objectively speaking, the coach of the year should have been Bill Belichick, right? right. Like, it's hard to argue otherwise, but he only won like a couple because. Of what you were just saying, it was like it was just it was just their standard. It's just what was right. expected. He still would he would, but then somebody would take a lovable loser and take them to the playoffs right. or something, and they get coach of the year because it's a better story and right. They haven't been there before and all that. Type Even of though thing. he never fell off, exactly right. His yeah. standard was so good that yeah. when he keeps doing that, no one even notices that it's good because they expect him to be that good. You know what I mean? Yeah. They expect him to hit. And yeah. but I'm thinking with because dude. When we're talking about snubs, not only like I, I look, I saw a lot of the movies. I think Killers of the Flower Moon was awesome. Like cinematically, it was great. It was a great story. I think everybody in it murdered. Now, I will say this, and this is not a this is not a criticism. It's just like it's the type of movie that it is. I don't know that I'll watch it again because right. it's because it's brutal and bleak. And it's, shit, bru right? it's brutal I and just, bleak and shit. I've just not been in a headspace for that I type of it. movie hey, ever I since totally, it came out. Like totally I totally understand that about it. I love Scorsese. I think I've seen literally all of Scorsese's other movies. I will watch it eventually, but I just haven't. What? Because anytime I sit down to watch it, I'm like, I don't want to bum myself out and, and for you know, three and a half hours. And it's tonight. wild, like because Scorsese to me is like one of the all-time kings of the rewatchable movie. Like, every, oh, almost yeah, every... Dude. The Departed, Goodfellas. Good fe dude, fucking, like, dude, even Shutter Island. Island. Like, even yeah. Shutter Island, like, it's a different headspace, but, like, whenever I'm just, like, wanting to throw some shit on, like, me and... Dude, I can't tell you how many times me and Bane have watched Shutter Island because I was like, uh, today I want a psychological thriller and I kind of just want to be tweeting on my phone. Like, all yeah. of his movies are, like, perfect to rewatch. But this one, again, though... If you're if you want to go for just like wow this is a visually stunning movie in which he pulled performances like dude Jason Isbell killed it and I'm not saying that Jason Isbell's not a talented person who worked hard but like I think it speaks to Scorsese that he took a person who is not an actor and uh -huh. pulled that performance out of him I don't think that any just any old director would have got Jason Isbell who's a guitar man to hit like that. Like, I think there's a lot right. of people that watched it and just thought, oh, here's an actor that I've never seen before. But he gets swept, and Leonardo DiCaprio, back to my point, 
who I thought it was one of his best performances ever because it's Leonardo DiCaprio playing completely against type. He's playing a hateable motherfucker and a dipshit. Didn't even get fucking nominated, dude, which I think is crazy. Right. Yeah, I'm uh I'm wanna I'm trying to find if I could find um I, I know one of them, Martin Scorsese, Martin Scorsese, he didn't win for a long, long time, despite hitting for a very long time before that, right? And uh it's that's how Three Six Mafia won one before him. I'm trying. I'm trying to look up the the movies that beat his movies. You know, I, the only one I know off the top of my head because I made a note of it earlier was that. Do um, you know what Goodfellas lost to? Okay, good. Hold on. Tell me what year Goodfellas came out in. I think that not ninety one. If the it came out in ninety one, I think came out in ninety one. It would have lost to the English Patient. Now the English Patient was few years after that because i remember the english patient year they called that one sundance by the sea i think because i don't <laughs> think there were any like blom- blockbusters that year yeah. or whatever and i remember <clears throat> that wasn't hitting for oh my schiller's daddy. list no you're closer there uh, it was uh dances with wolves oh yeah yeah which is one of those movies it's like you know fuck that Right. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah right yeah a fucking three and a half exercise in guilt yeah, right. I mean, it's dude, a, I mean, white savior classic. It's also, you know, the same story has been told a million times over. A million times. Uh, he's only won once for best yeah. director, and it was with The Departed. Yeah. Um, and they call that when uh, that was like his here you go. Because uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of people shit when he I won that. They I were know. Like, oh, and, he didn't even really deserve it. I'm like, are you I fucking know. serious? I know. I'm, I don't. It's like his best one. To me, it's absolutely one of his, at least one of his best. I dude, that I is not the, the narrative. I know, I know, I know. I, I didn't know that until recently. I told and you. I think I found out. I heard. Well, I heard some people. I heard some people on a podcast t- presenting that argument, like the argument that the departed he he shouldn't have won for that one because it don't really hit that hard. Yes, it does. That's I know. Insane. I'm with you. I'm with you. It it's like. My, I, well, it ain't my favorite. I'm not going to put it over Goodfellas or nothing, but, but it's like, but it's, but it's not up there. But here's the thing. It's like it, up but if there you, with it. Okay. Maybe don't put it over Goodfellas, but if you do, that's not stupid or wrong. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people go, well, like, oh, you can't even compare it to Goodfellas. I'm like, yeah, you can. You totally can. It's a, it's a good fucking movie. Like, dude, the departed to me is like this. It's almost like the Sopranos of movies. And I say that because, it's something that you don't go into expecting to for it also be, to be an almost comedy the whole time because right. it's funny as so fuck, funny. dude. Dude, Mark Wahlberg is so hilarious great. in that great. fucking movie. And that's you're talking about Scorsese and pulling like I like I like Mark Wahlberg. I do. I like Mark and and his funky bunch. Like I got no problem <laughs> with it. like I like Mark Wahlberg well enough. But you know he's not a master thespian. No, or anything. but he but like but he rocks in that movie. Yeah, and you know Scorsese that's his all time best performance. That and Boogie Nights. You know, Paul PTA. Thomas Anderson. He's good yeah. at that good at that type of thing too so oh hey uh, speaking of which because you don't watch a lot of news or read a lot of things this will get you rock hard uh they just announced pta's new movie is going to be starring leonardo dicaprio oh not did they yeah. say what it's about no but who gives a shit you know what i mean yeah, yeah i mean right. just it, i who who cares um but yeah no i mean like you know again like i think the departed might be if i had to rank like the a list of like the most rewatchable movies ever departed's like if it's not one, it's one A or one B, you know what I mean? Like, it's fucking awesome. So, like, to say that that was his, like, oh, here's a makeup award. Like, imagine right. hitting so hard that The Departed is your makeup award. That's fucking nuts so, to me. So, uh, just a couple of examples. Um, Raging Bull was his first, like, major lead nominated thing, and that lost out to Ordinary People. The drama directed by Robert Redford. I've never seen it, but I have heard of it. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's. You're bringing up another good point here. Pretty Let's well talk regarded. About the legacy of some of these movies that won versus the one that they beat, because I would argue yeah. that Shakespeare in Love's legacy was hurt by it winning, because now that movie is only regarded as like, oh, that's the movie that swept in and beat the better movie. Saving Private Ryan's legacy is that's one of the best movies of all time. When people think of Shakespeare in Love, they just think about that's that bullshit Weinstein pulled to fucking win this shit. You know what I mean? So, like, Spielberg still won. That movie still probably makes him more money than Shakespeare in Love does. 
Yeah. Yeah. You're probably right. Well, so uh, that was another thing I wrote down things. I wanted like what you just said, movies that didn't win or should have won or whatever. Uh, you know, a famously citizen Kane did not win best right. picture. They if, hated uh, him, dude. It was beat out by how green is my Valley. A it, coal, a, a coal mining drama that came out right after like grapes of wrath and that type of shit. You know, it was, it was in the, I mean, I've never seen that one. Can either, I tell you it, why he lost? Well, yeah. He lost because he didn't the, hit for them. No, the members of the academy, um, which, uh, uh, oh my lord, all their names are are evading me right now. But so many members of the academy, including uh, Louis B. Mayer, who Louis B. Mayer was a huge member of the academy. Um, it was actors and producers, and they they say like, oh, we started it for the integrity of you know this to to promote films. And at first, it was like set up as a quasi like union, but then the actual union happened because they were like, y'all aren't really doing anything; you're just kind of jerking everybody off. But Louis B. Mayer would later say like, I'll I'll just be straight up honest with you. The reason I was I cared so much about the Academy was because handing out trophies was a great way. Uh, to get actors and directors to do what I wanted without having to give them any more money. <laughs> he's like, you could yeah. dangle. He's like, you could dangle. He goes, these people would do anything if I just whispered Oscar buzz. They'd do anything, and I didn't have to give them any fucking money. Um, but but yeah. but when when Kane when when um Orson Welles comes along, you got to understand he's twenty four, twenty five. He was a Broadway fucking guy. He comes in, he gets the most lucrative deal anyone's ever had with Final Cut, and that's the most important thing. Nobody had Final Cut. They're giving it to someone on his fucking directorial debut. He makes all these demands. He gets it. He was shaking up the Hollywood elite. He was shaking up the system. He was shaking up everything, and because of that, the brass just did not like the guy, and those were the people who were making the votes, and they didn't want to make him happy. They didn't want to make him win because by letting him win, it was saying this is how it should be done, and they wanted to squash that. Yeah, that checks out. So um, Gangs of New York lost to Chicago. Gangs of New York didn't hit. Right. It was fine. I, mean, I, I about to say, I thought it was fine. But it was fine. It, you know. Uh, but Chicago didn't the, hit it. <laughs> the Aviator, the Aviator lost to Million Dollar Baby. That's I liked Aviator. I yeah, liked it's it. not it's not egregious. I get right? why Million yeah. Dollar Baby won. Yeah, Scorsese's not in 2005, but I want to talk about 2005 for a second because it was the year that it was widely regarded, I, at least in my from what I've seen and read over the years. Traffic. Widely, what. I think you're thinking of the right movie, but calling it the wrong name. Crash. Widely, yes, Crash. Right, widely regarded as the worst Best Picture winner of all time because it's an overly sentimental and condescending look at American racism that's, you know, um, just super up its own ass in a way that nobody really needed or appreciated. But one Best Picture over the other nominees in 2005 were Brokeback Mountain, uh, Capote. That movie was up its own ass, too. Hey. Good. Good night and good luck. And uh, Sorry. Munich, which Munich is heavily underrated, bro. Munich's good. Munich fucking goes hard. You, I, I'm, uh, I apologize for, I was trying to do a bit in the middle of that, and I'm an asshole. Good night and good luck. Capote, Munich, Brokeback Mountain. Yeah, that, 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 that's him. That, those yeah. four lost to Crash. All of, uh, all of them are, are better so than much better. Yeah. Not, not right. better, not better. So much better. Yeah, right. And then in 2006, he finally won for The Departed. Uh, but another interesting note, talking about directors and losing and whatnot, something that I've never heard anybody else point out, but I just found this earlier. And they didn't even point it out in this context. It was just looking up things like Oscar snubs, who got beat by who, whatever. And I've never seen us point this out, but I put this together, so I'm going to take credit for this until somebody proves to me that this has been pointed out before. All right, I'm sure people have thought of it, but I haven't heard anyone say it. Spike Lee kind of lost to fucking driving Miss Daisy twice in his career. Because, what? <laughs> because, because Spike Lee's big name-breaking movie was Do the Right Thing, yeah. right? Seminal movie in American cinema and everything. It's a great, I love Do the Right Thing. The movie's awesome. And, uh, it wasn't even nominated, which was seen as like a massive snub, even at the time. People are like, oh, the old, crusty-ass white academy just can't handle this, you know, hip, telling it like it is, speaking truth to power, black movie or whatever, which That's is probably I, true. I, I was I was told people didn't get offended by things like that back then, but 
you're right. telling sure. me that they did. That's crazy. So that year, uh, actual driving Miss Daisy won, right? Which again, it's like it's fine, but it's like a it's a very that like, was the safe... that was the magical Negro era. Exactly right. Yes, it's the type of thing that I don't think you know really holds up. No. Right. It's like uh it's Dude, a very... Jessica Tandy rules, but like yeah. and so does Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman, but like yeah. you, you come on. Right. Uh and then years later, in like I don't know, I don't know without looking it up, twenty seventeen ish or eighteen ish, something like that. Green Spike Hook? Lee Spike Lee was nominated for Black <laughs> Klansman, which is great. It's great so movie. good. It's so great good. movie. And that year he got beat <laughs> A green book, <laughs> which is kind of just sort of bizarre. Driving, driving Miss Daisy, sort of like it's yeah, very similar. Yeah. So it's like basically, and, and and that got shit on a lot too. And that, look, I'm a big I'm a big Fairly Brothers stand. Me too. I love, Peter, I love Peter Fairley. I think Green Book is a pretty good movie that I think got shit on a little too much for all that, but it still is is that that type of yeah. thing. And uh, so anyway, I just think I've never heard anybody else point that out. And I have to imagine Spike Lee, like I'd love to have a yeah. private conversation with him about what his actual feelings about Me that too. are. Cause I bet, I bet he would, uh, he could really go in. Cause that's, that's pretty funny. He said some foul stuff that second yeah. time. I promise you that. Um, hey, speaking of which stuff, he's, uh, Farley got a, he got a new one out that is the polar opposite of green book that, you know, Ricky Stanicki, you know, that's his. No. It's a new Cena movie. I, I said that. To, oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes, I, yes. I yes. said that, if you don't mind, because I did want, I, we can't get out of here without at least mentioning uh, uh, the Cena part of the Oscars. Do you, did you know, did you hear about that? So he come out butt naked, right? And yep. people are speculating it was to support the costumers union or something like that, but he didn't publicly say that, but that was the assumption. Is that? Oh, that would make more sense. No, people were publicly speculating. I saw, or that's what well, Katie people, said. No, everyone was talking about how Cat Williams was right, and that was a humiliation ritual uh, that he was having to do uh, in order to cater to those that pay him. According to Katie, the costumers union, or you know, whatever, you know, we've been having a lot of strikes and labor issues and stuff out here recently, and apparently the costumers are next up, or, or at least attempting to be, and. Uh, again, he didn't say either of those things publicly. Of course, he didn't say he was being publicly humiliated, but Katie told me that, uh, the speculation was that he was, cause he presented best costume. Yeah. That was the thing he was doing. And, and, uh, their, I guess their whole thing is their like union slogan thing that they have, like their rallying cry is something like you're naked without us. That okay. That's their thing. It's like costumers union. You're naked without us. Like okay. trying to, you should appreciate us more. That's their thing. He was presenting their award. He came out naked. Katie said people were speculating as a show of solidarity. What you said is much, much juicier, it, though. And it's a lot of, <laughs> and a lot of people, like, and a lot of, like, people with a lot of uh, big platforms were like, this is, th this is all this is. Like, it's a humility. He's, this is his Illuminati shit. And it's just like, it's so bananas to, for, for number one, it's like, dude, you think John Cena with that body was humiliated to come right. out naked? Of course. He's yeah. a fucking hilarious dude. And also, yeah. I'm sorry, and I'm not, I'm definitely not the only one that's going to have this take. That motherfucker worked for Vince McMahon for right. 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. He's been humiliated enough. This don't even come close. Anyways, no. go on. Oh, I mean, no, I was it. I, I, I you know, that's that's all I had heard about that. Oh, I agree I, with I what meant, you just said. I meant with your uh, you were you were on a roll doing other Oscar stuff. I just wanted to mention John Cena. I, I was talking. I was covering like uh, notable snubs and Martin Scorsese's history and everything. But I got through all the end of that basically. Did you see so. Pacino's flub? <laughs> uh, no, I did hear about it. He like <laughs> he like did an I'm Ron Burgundy type it, thing. He, <laughs> was, <laughs> so when, it was yeah. it was when Oppenheimer wins. Yeah. And he gets up there and like, I don't know if he was drunk or old or both. I think just yeah. old. I mean, probably drunk. Too. Dude, if I'm, I I don't know at what age I'm going to completely let go. Yeah. Uh, but there, I'll know it and everyone else will know it too. I promise. But he gets up there and like, they're like, you know, now presenting best picture, you know, Al Pacino, whatever. And he gets up there and like, you know, every... I mean, there probably wasn't many people in the room that had been to more Academy Awards than Al Pacino. You know the deal. Right. You go up there, 
They read the nominees so that they can flash the camera to everybody, build some suspense, make everyone reminded of like what's at stake here. This motherfucker goes straight up to the podium, grabs the envelope, opens it, and just goes, my eyes see Oppenheimer. <laughs> and, and everyone just kind of looks around, and all of a sudden, everybody just kind of starts clapping a little bit, and they play the music, and fucking Christopher Nolan wins for Oppenheimer. And that was it. Didn't announce nobody, and fucking show's over. Well, I mean... Hell, get it over with. You know? I mean, I agree with him, you know, yeah. but just fucking super funny to me. Uh, let's see, two thousand nine. Uh, let's look. Let's look at Tarantino's. Uh, Please, so Oscar, lost his, Pulp Fiction. Oscar history. Yeah, to Forrest Gump, which is one of those. It's like you get it. I do get it. Like I'm not yeah. gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna act like that's crazy or agree. That's not crazy. Anything. Yeah. Like I think in that's one of those in hindsight you go. Well, Pulp Fiction's better, and it's like, yeah, but at the time, dude, like, Forrest Gump was like, it ha took the world by storm. And by the way, I'm a Forrest Gump apologist. I love that goddamn movie. I do, too. I'll yeah. always love that movie. It's great. There's too, it came out when we were kids. There's too much sentimental and nostalgic value in it for me to I ever can't judge it. Yeah. I think it hits. Yeah, right. right. Exactly. Yeah. No, I'm the same way. Uh, Let's see. Academy Awards. Yeah, so he was nominated for Pulp Fiction and lost to... uh. To Forrest Gump, and then he was nominated again, and this is the one that I actually saw that made me bring it up. He was nominated for uh, Inglorious Bastards, which Should've is the next nomination, hundred percent. And some of these movies are good, dude. Some of them. This was the first year after they instituted the Dark Knight rules, so this is the first year they had ten nominees. Right. Inglorious Bastards was nominated, did not win. Here are the other nominees. I'll end with the winner, and to me, Inglorious Bastards is much better well, is better than all of these so here are the other nominees up in the air the george clooney i Anna. liked it but it's good it's a good not movie. even close um, though up pixar classic okay for sure um, is there another up one no i mean no, no just those two but yeah same year a serious man the coen brothers love it um, precious based on the novel push by sapphire didn't see it seems classic yeah, right. <laughs> it is yeah. a fdh classic uh and Education, which is uh, the Carrie Mulligan movie um, that I did see at the time. I don't remember. It's a British coming-of-age drama. No idea. That, like, broke Carrie Mulligan. Um, District 9, love that fucking movie. Love it. I just rewatched District 9 with my sons, like, last week. They loved it, too. They write that down. That movie fucking rock. You ain't never seen District 9? That's with, uh, Bro. It's from, that's with dude from, um, well, Star he's from Wars, District right? 9. Uh, John Boyega, isn't he in that? Who? Isn't no, John Boyega? No, no, that's Attack the Block. Okay. Uh, which also rules. Write that down, too. I just I just watched both of those movies with my boys in the past two weeks, funnily enough. By the way, District, District note, 9 was, is Neil Blomkamp, a South African director. Yeah. It was his first movie. It starred this guy who was not an actor, Charlotte Copley. He became an actor because he kicked so much ass in this movie. You've seen him and stuff since then. Uh -huh. It's about... Um, alien refugees in South Africa, and it's they live in like the slums, and okay. it's fucking wild. Uh, okay. It's it rules, dude. It's like action packed and filled with social commentary and stuff. I fucking love that movie. Can, can we I do still something? like Inglorious Bastards better? I got three left. Okay. The Blind Side, no, fuck oh, no, dude. Right. Especially the, considering right. the all of it. Right, yeah. The Michael Ower, the guy it's about, was like, that movie ain't, I'm not R-worded. You know? Right, right. <laughs> uh, Avatar, and then the winner was The Hurt Locker, which is okay. a good movie. Right. But Inglorious Bastards is better than all of the. I would rank those Inglorious Bastards, District 9, and then the rest of them in some order. That's what I would put. But Yeah, I'm not even going to say what I was going to say, but yes, you are correct. Inglorious Bastards or uh, have fucking won that. For the, okay. Inglorious Bastards, like, it's... I go back and forth on which is my favorite Tarantino movie, but however, usually it ends up coming back to me going, I mean, it's Inglorious Bastards. Me too. Well, I've told you before, maybe even on here, like, I think it'll always be Inglorious Bastards for me because that also happens to be the last movie I ever saw in a movie theater right. with my dad. So yeah. nothing's ever going to top that for me. We were he, he turned me on to Quentin Tarantino. We're both huge Tarantino fans. So, yeah. Speaking of Tarantino, his next, he was nominated again for Django Unchained. 
uh, in 2012 and did not win. Let me guess. He ordered them. Uh, yeah, yes. There's some hitters in this lineup, though. But, I mean, I still think Django and Chain is probably the best of them. The winner was Argo. I, I like Argo. I like I think Argo, Ar- too. Argo, but Argo's come on. a good movie. Uh, uh, Lincoln, Steven Spielberg and Lincoln with Daniel Day-Lewis was another one that year. The Les Miserables remake with Russell Crowe and Hugh Jackman. Silver Linings Playbook, David O. Russell, Jennifer Lawrence. Zero Dark Thirty. Uh, and then Life of Pi, Beast of the Southern Wild, and Amour. Oh, I guess Amour. Yeah, I don't know Amour. I don't remember Amour. I, uh, I assume it's a French movie, meaning loves. Seems like it, yes. And then his next and final nominations were for... Uh, once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, which lost to Parasite. I mean, bro, yeah. Parasite is a fucking great movie. Yeah. Th- dude, this year was stacked. Yeah. Parasite, Ford versus Ferrari, that's a really good movie, too. The Irishman, I, so Scorsese and Tarantino, both in there. Uh, I like The Irishman. Uh, Jojo Rabbit rules. Yeah, it does. Joker's, Joker's good. I never saw the Little Women remake. So me. Uh, and then... <laughs> I never saw Marriage Story either. Same reason. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. 1917. Okay. I, 1917 goes fucking hard. Dude, so I can't believe I'm about a, to say this. That's a stacked this. year right there. I can't believe I'm about to say this. And I also didn't see the same two movies that you didn't see. So yeah. me. But I can't believe I'm about to say this. But Scorsese genuinely had the weakest movie out of all those. I genuinely. think I agree with you. And, and I, maybe not Joker, but the rest of them I definitely agree it, with. I, only because I'm comparing it to other Scorsese movies. I think that if yeah. like I think that if I just look at Joker and the Irishman like independently, maybe I agree. But I really, I really like the Joker. Now, what hurt the Joker for me was how much so many people I hate like the Joker. And yes, I, I tried. The, I try not to let that affect me, but it's so hard for it well, not to affect the me. The other thing about it is, I don't know if you've seen this movie. It's funny you're comparing it to Scorsese. Joker is good. That movie is pretty much just the king of comedy. The 1980s Scorsese Dude, you're movie right. starring it's Robert Pumpkin. De Niro. He yeah, plays Pumpkin. And then De Niro and De is even the, is the he's, fucking he's uh, Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis. Yeah, Holy exactly. Shit, right. He is. Yeah. Wow, and, and that the fact that De Niro got cast in that role makes it seem like like uh old uh, fuck uh, what's his name the director he directed the Hangover Todd Phillips right? Todd, Todd, Phillips. Todd Phillips yeah movie. it makes it seem like Todd Phillips knew and was doing was, that it was purpose. like he was like no this is an homage but it's right. like bro I feel like it goes a little past homage like it's kind of the Dude, same it, movie it's, so that's it's exa- part of my bro, problem bro it. it's exactly the same movie I, I know it's right. almost <laughs> like Rupert Pupkin in after he got out of jail. Ended up getting the late night show, grew mm-hmm. up, and then that happened to him. Well, now yeah. hold on, just make that canon, and the movie hits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess but, you're right. But the, but the Irishman dude, like, now I'm very glad that I took Neil Brennan's advice, which was to um, watch the Irishman as if it was a four part miniseries. Neil uh-huh. N- Neil put out like a guide. He watched it and time stamped it. And gave the and gave the timestamps like titles, and he's like, "Watch it." And I did, yeah. and I was like, "This was great," because dude, it's a goddamn slog if you don't. Yeah, um, it's also like you know, a lot was made of the de-age, de-aging technology. Some of it did not work out. Like Robert De Niro when he's supposed to be young, whipping that store that doctor's did, ass didn't work. Is one of the most unintentionally comedic things dude. I've ever seen because he did, he could not possibly look more like a papa. Shoot it from the it, back and have a right. different guy. When he throws that gun in the river too, he's also <laughs> supposed to be young, and he's like, it looks so papawy because yeah. he's a goddamn papaw. You're just using computers to de papaw him, but you can't hide a papaw. You can't. You can't anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, but all that aside, I did really like it. And also another thing I thought about the Irishman, and again, I did like it, but I kept thinking, I was like, dude, if this movie didn't have the pedigree it yeah. has, yes, it would be bordering on self parody. Yes, of, of, as far it's like of course, I of Scorsese and De Niro and of yes, all those guys, all of them. it yep. was like they would. They felt it would like be like scary movie. So, it was like they were teetering so close to parroting themselves, but yeah. it's like because they all hit so hard. Yep. They did kind of pull it off, but dude, they're just there. It's like you fucking moo cop sucker, you. <laughs> I'll fuck it with the. You know, it's like it's so. It's just so. Yeah. I don't know. It's like so. Uh, Raven. It's just it's so very Raven. Raven. And dude, like, and I love Pacino, but like he. He was a, a he, I don't think he fit as um 
Yeah, as, Hoffa. As, as Hoffa. And I'm only yeah. saying that because of how many other times I've seen Hoffa portrayed really good. Like, yeah. the, the Hoffa biopic with Jack Nicholson is not a great movie, but Jack Nicholson really does a great fucking duh as Hoffa. And, like, I've we've all seen Hoffa. You know, like, I know how this guy – and and I don't know, he just didn't – what. but again, you, you get – it's the movie nerd in me is like, I'm seeing all these guys in one place. This is fucking cool. Whatever. But yeah, you know, that's another one where it's like, I probably won't, I might throw that on if I want to go to sleep, yeah. you know, but it, you know, it was good. Uh, but yeah, uh, Django wipes the floor with a lot of those. Oh, this yeah, is a different well, that, year. That was once upon a time in Hollywood yeah. year, but dude, it, once upon a time in Hollywood, it's, it's fucking great. phenomenal too. Yeah. Yeah, oh uh, no, dude, fucking love it. Like it, it every now and then it kind of sneaks up there on my Tarantino almost number one because yeah. it's also fucking hilarious. It's great. I think it might be his pound for pound funniest movie for sure, uh, I and think that means so. a lot to me yeah, as a comedian. He, yeah, right. No, I'm with you. Yeah, rewatchability, uh, dude. I think you have yeah. to have comedy for something to be supremely rewatchable. Like that's uh-huh. that's what something has to like. There can be a great movie. But if it doesn't have brevity and comedy, you're probably not going to throw it on again. But if it has that, that's why The Sopranos is like the most rewatchable. It's more rewatchable than Breaking Bad. I love Breaking Bad, but like if you're going to rewatch one of them, you rewatch The Sopranos because you rewatch it the same way you would rewatch Seinfeld. You just throw on one episode and hear fucking yeah. Polly call uh, someone a fucking Goomba Manuk yeah. and it's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, The Sopranos is absolutely, definitely funnier, but Breaking Bad's got humor in it too. It, it does, it's, but it's, I'm telling, but dude, there's episodes of The Sopranos that I swear to you, I'm like, they're making a comedy on yeah, purpose. Right. It's not like this is a dark show that has comedy. It's like they got sitcom writers to write this show, and every right. now and then they fucking off somebody, murder somebody. Yeah, yes, that's dude, true. It's so that goddamn true. funny. Yeah. All right. Well. That's about what I've got for the yeah. Oscars, I think. Well, there you go. I mean, uh, I you know, one day, one day soon, I do want to uh, uh, discuss the history of the Oscars because there's some there's some really fascinating stuff. Uh, but I'm glad we did this. And uh, see, we didn't have to watch it. You know what I mean? No. That's Is that what you were gonna do? Were you prepared to talk about the history and I just steamrolled you the whole time? No, I wasn't oh, okay. prepared to All talk right. about. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Prepared. All right, dude. I be- I mean, listen. I'm. If you had have said Corey. Tell me about the history of the Oscars. Yeah, I could have done it. You know what I uh-huh. mean? But no, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, right. Do you want to do some airmail, my friend? Hey. hey. Okay. Uh, let's do it. Oh, Lord, we got a shit ton that I have starred here. Uh, subject line, Cho and Trey are both dumbasses. Here we uh, go. Hey, guys, I love the show, and I've emailed before, Freemasons and Christmas lights. I'm currently listening to the Hedy Lamar episode, and I've got to give you dipshits a history lesson. Austrians and Germans both speak German, so of course their names sound similar. Also, Hitler himself was Austrian and joined the German army in World War I. Uh, I don't remember. Did we say, yeah, did we I don't say something what, that alluded? I think, I think we were talking about what her name originally was, I think, which was like, wasn't it like, Hedwig Sassen fights or yeah, something, right. something like that. I don't remember the context of what I always said either, but it was something about that, I think. It's so often I read one of these where we're getting called wrong, and I'm like, I believe you, but I don't even remember being wrong yeah. about that. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's see here. All right, uh, subject line, the Kamchatka. So I just listened to the episode about Timothy Dexter, and it reminded me wow. of an, Yeah, when was that? A long time ago. <laughs> and it reminded I me. Mean, yeah. It reminded me. I think me that of, was one of the first remote episodes, yeah. I think. So, I mean, a, lo- a while ago. It reminded me of another one of history's great tales of fuck up the Russian repair ship, the Kamchatka. The basic story is that Russia and Japan went to war. Russia had its entire, quote, navy in the Baltic Sea. And given that Japan is in the Pacific, the Tsar decided to order his fleet to sail from the Baltic around Africa and Asia to the Pacific. One of the ships in his fleet was the Kamchatka, 
the most inept and disastrous war vessel to ever sail. The Kamchatka opened fire on British fishing vessel between Denmark and the UK. It thought they were Japanese warships. This almost started a war between the UK and Russia. On two different occasions, they reported to the fleet that they had been attacked and were sinking. There was no enemy within hundreds of miles, and the ship was fine. The first, You know what? There's a shitload load of stuff here, and this is great. Thank you for sending this in. I'm going to save all this, and we're just going to fucking do an episode on the Kam, uh, the Kamchatka. How about that? Thank you, Dr. Drew. Uh, really appreciate that. One last in here. I got I to gotta read this one because it's from our friend, Dr. Kim, and the subject line is puritanical buckle blood with a side of meatballs. There we go. Um, Kim Cusado. Kim Cusado. Yeah. yeah. Always talking shit about how we don't hit and how we're not healthy mm. and uh, we're going to die soon. That's yep. Kim, who we love, by the way. Yep. Dear Trey and Corey, love the Hedy Lamar tribute. Oh, and by the way, I know a lot of people, uh, when we read airmail, they're like, hey, you've only read me once, but you've read Kim a lot. I don't know what to tell you, but she subscribes to Trey's Patreon and my Substack. So, like, that's just how that goes. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, we live in a capitalistic country, and money does buy you some things. Like, I'm going to give Kim a little bit. I'm going to give her a little bit of preferential treatment. Um, which, by the way, patreon.com slash Trey Crowder and bonuscorey.com. Love the Hedy Lamar tribute. Love to hear about powerful women. We did have someone, <laughs> I got to mention this. We had someone write in that was like, Dear Corey and Trey, thank you so much for talking about Hedy Lamar on International Women's Day. And I, yeah. and I totally was about to respond like, I'm so glad you noticed that. Guys, um, that was a huge coincidence. Utter uh, coinky dink. Utter yep. coinky dink. Uh, now, I will say this to give us credit, like, we talk about women powerful women a lot on this show like yeah. I, I don't think that i don't think we can be accused of only talking about like men it would be funny if if we admitted that we're like yeah total coincidence we had no idea you know we don't keep up with when every <laughs> single day is when it comes out or whatever and then like on next week's episode if we were like y'all it's our international donut <laughs> day or whatever <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We just started doing that every week, you know, with more and more obscure things, whatever it happened to be uh, but uh, after professing our ignorance on Women's Day. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, but, well, the truth is, like, we knew it was International Women's Day when it happened, but we record these in advance and don't look yeah. two days into our fucking right. calendar. But um, I come from quite nutty relations. My, my nana, Maria Trohani Angelina Rathburn, parentheses, Horny lady with young, impotent boyfriends about whom I have written before married Orson Rathburn around 1944 after she was abused and beaten by Ofimo Angelina, but not before she had an affair with Giuseppe Martirona, which produced my mother. Kim, this is serious boy. spaghetti shit going on here, Kim. <laughs> Goddamn. Anyway. anyway, when she married Orson, he was a widower with five kids, and one of them, my Aunt Anna Louise, Aunt Lou to me who married nana's oldest son orlando augustina angelina aka uncle lenny which is how nana and orson met at their oldest kid's wedding decided to investigate the genealogy of the rathburns and found relations all the way back to the mayflower i was wondering when this is gonna get to that buckle shit i was horrified by this finding pilgrim blood about the ickiest one one can spawn from but then i remembered that despite the fact that orson adopted mom she was the product of an affair with the giuseppe with, with Giuseppe Martirona and is 100% Italian by blood, so I escaped the puritanical buckle-tainted serum, or so I thought. Unfortunately, Aunt Lou wouldn't let it go. She started digging into a whole lot of relations of folks who married into the Angelina Rathburn clan and discovered that my father's mother, Rachel Loud, my only non-spaghetti grandparent, had relatives on the Mayflower as well. My horror resurfaced, and I knew that I would not be able to escape it. I must own it. I am a Spilgrametti <laughs> I am a Spilgrametti American. Just Spilgrametti. take me just take me out back and stone me. <laughs> Yours in shame, Kim C. Kim, God damn it. I love That's you so much. Great. Uh you can send us your airmail at putting on airs at gmail.com. I already mentioned Trey's Patreon and my Substack. Uh, thank you all for subscribing to this show. And uh, if you're not watching us, you can do that at watchpoa.com. Trey, tell everybody where you're going to be in the next couple of weeks or whatever. Go to treycrowder.com. Look at all my upcoming dates. I've got a bunch later this year. In the next few weeks, 
I've only got a couple in Seattle and Vancouver. Uh, but then after that, I'm going all over the place. So yeah, TreyCrowder.com. All right. Uh, like I said, thanks for, you know, leave us a review on, uh, on, uh, the iTunes or the whatever podcast service. Oh, we have to say this. I totally forgot. If you if you are one of the four to five percent of airheads who listen to us on Google Podcasts, Google Podcasts is going away. I don't know why. I don't know how Google failed at something, but they did. Uh, so please go to another podcast platform, subscribe to Putting On Air so that you won't miss episodes. And while you're there, leave us a five star review. If you're not going to leave us a five star review, just just listen, and you don't have to say anything. You know what I mean? It really helps the show. Watch us at WatchPoa.com. And as always, stay fancy motherfuckers skew mm-hmm skew here's lydia loveless one two mm-hmm. three four one two three four royalty and rednecks are alike they both like cutting and picking fights biscuits and baked beans where they don't belong sit on down with Corey and trey and learn some fancy shit today we'll laugh a little even when they're wrong They'll take you to a magical place where if you call someone a cut, nobody cares. They keep it debonair at putting on airs, putting on airs, putting on airs, putting on.